Hi, and welcome back to Bullet Journaling for Dungeons and Dragons. This is the third part to a who knows how long series. Uh, so if you haven't caught part one and part two of the series, please go and check those out now. I'll leave the links up on the screen. Just make sure that you're all caught up and ready to go. So today we'll be going over episode one and how I'm going to be taking the notes for episode one. I feel I need to start off with an apology. I actually lost the first part of this recording. Very frustrating. Thought my phone would be a better option to record this. Turns out I was incorrect. So we are starting kind of in the middle there, but I can fill you in on what we've done so far. Lucky for me, I can go back and watch the VODs for these episodes. So episode one of the Chocolatiers campaign was uh, earlier this year, so I could go back and re-listen to it and use my own notes that I took from the session and add them into it as I need, basically to make sure that all bases are covered, I have all of the information I need, and everything is super relevant. I will also be going fairly artistic for these spreads. So please, if that's not something that you're interested in, just take the basics away from it. The way that I use the legend to write down my notes and uh, take different notations for different things. For example, the initiative tracker that I have in there is really good and just a cool thing to note down. Um, so you don't have to do anything too fancy here. I just was feeling a little bit creative today and I really wanted to bring in a little bit more color to my journal. I also am trialing something a little bit different for this episode as well, or this part or whatever. I really got to get those around the right way. Um, I'm actually not working off of a script for this. Um, I just feel like it'll make it a little bit more free flowing. I won't feel quite so restricted in what I need to say. And if I need to add a note in anywhere that I need, I can just say it and it'll be great. Uh, so there might be a little bit of stumbling over my words, but I am ready to take you on this adventure. Please prepare for all of relevant cheesiness that I have at my disposal. Yay. <laughs> so first off, you already saw the banner, uh, the episode one banner that I did at the end of the second part of the bullet journaling series, which means that I can jump straight in. The way that the first episode was organized for us, particularly in the Chocolatiers, was that we had an initial scene that was a flash forward to a time well into the campaign where we were caught in a maelstrom and we were faced with the avatar of creation. It was this really big epic moment, but it was only kind of a small snapshot into what we could expect for the campaign, which made it really easy to actually take down. In terms of how I actually use that in my notes, you'll see that there is a small underlined part there that says opening scene. I love using small titles to break up my notes so that I have a kind of idea of where we've gone from one place to another. If we're in a particular room or house or building, I tend to break up scenes like that. Or if we're jumping between character point of views, also really good to just know when that kicks in. A small detail, but I find it's pretty important and it works really well for me. Um, it helps me to be able to go back quickly through these notes and to just find out when things happened. You may also remember the legend that we did at the beginning of the journal. So you'll see a lot of those uh, little notations or bullets or however you want to refer them appearing throughout this part. Um, and I'll be kind of talking through each of them. So you'll see for the first section there, I have a little heart. That is the one that I use for PCs or NPCs, basically characters of any description, whether they are player characters or um, controlled by the DM. Uh, that's where I note what they do, because let's be real, d and is are based a lot on what characters or creatures do around you. And so it's something that's pretty important. Plus, I don't know, I just thought the love heart was cute and it works really well. I tend to also note things underneath. So you see that small dash just beneath where I continue the line of thought there. So for instance, uh, the six of us are together 
And then I kind of go into detail about what we're seeing, what we're experiencing. And then I use at the bottom there, the uh, combat symbol to say that we have entered into combat with the avatar of creation. I like to think of it like you would paragraphs. If you were uh, trying to break this up a little bit further, it just helps to further compartmentalize your notes so that you can find particular scenes if you need to. And then, though I didn't do it for this particular one, but I promise I do it later, um, most of the time if you lead with the character or person's name at the beginning, uh, it tells you what person did what thing that led to what or what they found out or whatnot but I'll show you that later. I also like to take note of initiative numbers. It's not super important, but it's just something cute, something extra to add, especially when you have some downtime in combat, if you're doing these at a table as well, um, or online or whatnot. You have a lot of time in between combat to do things, so it's usually pretty easy to, you know, sit there and do some extra stuff. Personally, I don't take a lot of notes for combat itself unless it is purposefully relevant. Say a building falls over or someone was to hurt themselves in a permanent kind of way or something like that. Like, you know, running around, hitting things, that's all fun. I just don't really, I don't need to write it. And I'm trying to go for a fairly efficient bullet journal, even though the big fancy drawings don't really give off that vibe. <laughs> I'm trying to make it as easy as possible to quickly note things down if I need. It also means when I'm going back through my notes, I don't need to go through, you know, however long it was for the combat. Let's say it was two hours of combat. I don't need to go through two hours worth of notes in my bullet journal. I can just go, okay, cool. That fight happened. Excellent. On to the next bit. The important thing is as well is that you're the one who's going to be reading these notes. So you're the only one that needs to make sense of them. So if there are things that you want to include or you want to take out because you're like, oh, that's not relevant. That's not something I need to remember. Then go ahead, do it. It's your thing. You go ahead. So there was a cool thing that our DM Dom did for the first episode. He broke up each of our characters into different individual introductory scenes. So again, you can see the introduction scene heading at the top there that just helped me know that it was the introduction of Brynjale uh, and that was their initial scene where they were before they met up with the party. Your game might not have something like this, but it's just kind of showing you ways that you can break things up with titles and fancy things and just to make everything seem really nice. Again, we just love that compartmentalizing our notes. You'll also see an example of me using the questioning or question uh, bullet there as well. Our DM noted that when Bryn left, she left behind her father and was leaving shortly after her mother had left. So I left a few notes there about where her mother went, but also why did Bryn leave? You know, why did she leave her dad behind? This gives me some kind of RP point that I can maybe bring up with Bryn's character later to kind of try and drive things ahead and kind of work out those sneaky backstory details as well. The questioning option can also be really good when you're looking to find out information about enemies or if you find some small piece of information and you're like that doesn't add up why is that there why is there a big old clue here but it doesn't match up to anything there's also an example of the first time that a town or location has been mentioned a uh, goldford is left in a box which just denotes that that is a place we haven't heard of that before it is something new it just shows that that is the first time that we have heard of or been to that place. Uh, it can help us work out whether it is somewhere new that we may need to venture to, or if it's just a new piece of information about the area. You'll also see down the bottom that I also like to note skill checks as well. Um, similar to the initiative tracker, it doesn't necessarily matter whether or not I write down each check or each number or whatnot, 
but it is just nice to know when you've succeeded or failed at something as to why something didn't work or didn't happen or we didn't find out about something. If you fail a perception check, we can keep that in mind for later just to be like, hey, wonder what was there? Hmm, interesting. Move on. But essentially, the pages are just set out in their small mini air quotations, paragraphs, to try and break up each of the different actions and things that have happened during that time. For those of you who are artistically minded, uh, I did the cool little ship, uh, which I thought was really fun. Um, I actually later, I feel, I tried to introduce some more color to the page by filling in the waves, and I feel like I shouldn't have. I'm kind of a little bit sad about it, but once I find my white marker again or have to go out and buy a new one, I feel like I can fix it. I can I can redeem myself, I promise, I think, maybe. I don't know, I just thought the design looked cool too. Even if it with the color as well, it just really gives it a bit of pop. Um, and for Bryn there as well, they talked about uh, Null Root and they also talked about Squire's Bane as two different, um, one herb and one berry. And so I just wanted to put it on the page. Gives a little bit of symbolism, you know, a little bit of a connection. I also did a serif font uh, for Bryn Yell's name as I actually probably feel that that's something that would suit Bryn Yell's character the most. Um, I just genuinely tried to think of things that would suit their characters as I went along. On the next page, I decided to do something a little bit fancy and go with some mixed media. I pulled out some craft paper, you know, responsible, recyclable, that kind of thing. And I wrote down the note that Bryn gave to the small boy in the episode. She signed her name and did the quote, May the Northern Lights Guide You, and signed Brynjel the Irradiant. So I just wanted to do a little cute little thing. I just wrote it out and did it with some nice fancy writing and such. It was cool. It was cute. I liked it. But yeah, you see more evidence or more uses of the paragraphing look there. I just continue to use that heart bullet basically the whole way through. It is honestly one of my favorites. Um, so yeah, I tend to use it a lot. Um, but obviously you'll be able to find as you go along bullets that you will cling to as well. Um, I just think that it's, it's really cute and it puts a really nice touch on it. And I just, I really enjoy it a lot. I am thinking about whether or not I'll go back and use a highlighter to highlight each of the little hearts because obviously there is space there to do that and like I said I usually lead with the character that did the thing doing it so I'll see how I go I'll report back if it works out well. Aerie's little section was quite fun it all was summed up basically in that one air quotes paragraph there are a lot of air quotes of today, apparently. Um, and I was just able to use a cool, light, breezy font with a lot of sparkles because that's airy energy right there. There was also a tiny bit of gold that I put in each of the stars. A small touch, but I'm sure Airy would have appreciated it. Then we moved on to Natalie herself. And honestly, I think out of all of them, the one, the spreads that I'm happy with in general were actually these two, because I eventually went in and did a cool little great ax design on the right hand side and added some more craft paper at the bottom. And I am a big fan of mixed media on journals as well, making it have that real scrapbook look. That's something that you can also adopt as well. It's something that's really easy and it just gives a new element to the page. Again, even if you're not really overly artistic either, it's just something cool to break up your writing just to be like, hey, there's a different kind of paper here. It makes your paper thicker too. And it just generally gives that nice full feel to a page. Anyway, I'll stop raving about uh, craft paper and uh, go into it a little bit more. So again, same thing with Natalie, 
Just the same introduction scene as all the others have had so far. Um, I also, you see as an example, the second dot there that talks about Natalie meeting Hawk. I kind of show you how you kind of indent further if you're kind of trying to give more information about a particular scene. So for instance, Natalie sits beside Hawk. We are introduced to Hawk and his name is underlined. Um, and then we're joined by a second man. Then I indent that further and go some little bit of information about him, that he is the son of the captain of the guard, he's the town jackass, and he starts harassing someone. Just kind of helps to, instead of doing a completely new paragraph to introduce this new character, it just kind of makes it kind of a seamless transition or whatnot, because it's all a part of that same moment. I also, you know, I couldn't resist putting in there the fact that I headbutted him before combat actually started. I just, I was very proud of that moment. Natalie should be very proud of that moment too. We always headbutt idiots, so it's great. And yeah, I just went in with a little bit more of the metallic colors as well. I love metallic colors. I would use them on everything if I had the opportunity. Um, I do need to get myself a brown uh, texture or something of that sort um, to be able to fill in all of the wood details on the ship and also on the axe, but I'll deal with that later. You, This is a good opportunity to say that your bullet journal doesn't need to be perfect. You can always add to it as you go along. You can always add in these fancy artistic details later. They don't need to be now. Just leave a little bit of space on your page when you're doing it out and you'll be good. A good example of kind of pages where you didn't really get the inspiration as what you did in other pages is actually the page just after this. I was trying to find something to encapsulate Eminence and Oriana. I actually thought later about doing a kind of like uh, horn design like the deer antlers from the front of the bullet journal to go underneath their names, which would be the horns of themselves. These are both teethlings. Um, and I really wish I'd come up with that idea sooner. However, I did not. <laughs> so I just felt that even though the spread is rather simple, it still gets across what I need it to. Um, you see that I continue along the path of breaking things up into those paragraphs, indenting when I need to provide further information, and just introducing different characters um, and different questions as well. Like for instance, they brought up that their father was some big head honcho down in hell. And you know, who could resist a little bit of spicy gossip like that? Also, there was a particularly comic moment where a gentleman said that he had a note from the girl's father, um, but it turns out it was basically just a shopping list uh, in Infernal. So, of course, naturally, I included that shopping list in my journal. Just thought it was, you know, an extra nice touch. One thing I haven't talked about just yet is actually the use of arrows as movement. Um, it kind of is a way for me to be able to note in the journal when a character goes from one place or one scene to another when it's still a part of the same part of the episode. So you'll see at the top it's uh, they're traveling to Goldford, then they're traveling to riding through the streets. Then later on, only a few sentences down, it says that they travel to an alchemist's hovel. It just kind of helps to know that these characters are moving but there's not a specific interruption to the scene there. And last, but certainly not least, we have the final spread for episode one. On this one, I was again, feeling a little bit uninspired. Um, I think I used up most of my inspiration on those first two spreads, but you know what? I tried my best and that's the important thing. I did a really cool door which I'm very proud of. Um, it's got kind of like a stone design around it and such, um, which I was really, yeah, really happy with, um, which has let me, me, left me with a lot of space and that bottom corner there. 
Um, I also have the arrows uh, that were mo uh, noted in there that flew at the party when they entered into that second room. And I also tried my hand at drawing some cute little magic runes, which I wasn't overly happy with, but again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We can always fix it in post, you know? Which in this case just means going back and redrawing it or perhaps covering it in another piece of paper or grabbing out my fan favourite carafe paper and doing it all over again. I also liked to mention the uh, group stealth check that we did for this particular part as well. I did note on there that each of us failed, <laughs> um, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, and also I got to write down so that I knew that for later to know that uh, we all can't stealth. Before I end out the episode as well, I thought I'd just mention too that I have actually, um, because uh, in the current timeline that we're at in the now, the present, um, Eridan has actually left the campaign. So I actually haven't taken the uh, liberty of writing in his character extra stuff in there. Um, obviously he was still there for these episodes, but knowing that he isn't going to be there in, I think it's like five or six episodes in, I just glossed over his stuff there. But on that note, that is a full run through of a full episode of notes using my bullet journaling for Dungeons and Dragons techniques. Um, obviously I still lean heavily on techniques used in the bullet journaling community, um, but I am just particularly loving this style and applying that to Natalie's journal. Um, if I haven't explained this before, I'm pretty sure I have. I actually started using these kinds of techniques in my book club campaign journal, which is the one that I'm DMing. Um, so I've had a bit of time to practice these. They're not perfect, but they are getting there. Uh, so if you have any feedback or any cool things that you want to see, or even maybe if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description below. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that I play Natalie alongside each of my fellow PCs and DM on the Wisdom Saves channel on Sundays, every second Sunday at around 3.30 Adelaide time. Uh, it'd be really cool if you'd come join us and see Natalie and the group in action. But otherwise prepare, I will have episode 2 out in a timely fashion, I promise. COVID has kind of really messed us all around, so I'm really keen to get back to a regular posting schedule as well. But anyway, I will see you all next time. Feel free to check me out on Twitch. I also stream on there. Um, I also post things on different media platforms. Feel free to find all of those links in the description below. But otherwise, I've had a great time and I will see you for episode two next time.